Hey guys, thank you for joining me in another IGCSE revision video. Today we're going to be covering a couple of MCQ questions that have come up in the past uh, regarding the topic of biological molecules. So how this is going to work is I'm going to go through each of the six questions and pause the video and take a look at the question, read the question and answer it and then I'll go back in and, and I'll sort of explain each question with the answers and why the answers were uh, what it was. So here's the first question and again pause it. And here's the second question. I can enlarge that for you. Here is the third question. Here's the fourth question. And here's the fifth question. And here is the sixth question. Okay, so I hope you have all your answers by now. Uh, let's just go through these questions and uh, figure out the answers. So uh, this question really was about your knowledge about Benedict solution and iodine solution being used as food tests. And so the Benedict solution is of course a test for reducing sugar. Uh, it is originally a blue, blue sort of solution and if in the presence of reducing sugar it will change and it can change into a variety of colors. And here you have a gradient from blue being the original and in the presence it will change into one of these four colors. Green being you know very small amounts of reducing sugar and brick red being a really large amount or high concentration of reducing sugar but for the purposes of our question really it was you know we just needed to rule out A and B being the answer so it would have been C or D. Um, Iodine solution is a test for starch as you should know and it starts off as a brown structure and turns black in the presence of starch. In our question, uh, because we don't have any starch, zero grams, uh, we'd expect a negative test. So therefore we'd expect a positive in the Benedict's and a negative in the iodine and so therefore arrive at the conclusion that the answer must be D. So the next question, which processes depend on the fact that water is a solvent? And we can definitely tell that it's definitely not the evaporation of spongy mesophyll cells because evaporation has nothing to do with water being a solvent. And loss of sweat from the skin surface, again, that is not much to do with water being a solvent. It's to do with homeostasis and to reduce um, the, the sort of heat or the energy on the surface of their body and so what leaves that, that sort of leaves the glucose being transported in the blood plasma and that is absolutely related to water being a solvent because glucose is def, uh, sort of it's basically dissolved in water of course in the plasma and uh, it is carried around the body transported to cells that need to use it for respiration. Uh, movement of water by osmosis that of course has definitely got something to do with water being a solvent and if we were to load up this diagram of, of osmosis uh, let's just recap on the fact that water from higher water potential to lower water potential uh, sort of moves down that gradient and that's what we call osmosis across a partially permeable membrane and uh, the only reason why this works and there is a difference in water potential between the left hand side and the right hand side is because there's different levels of solute concentration in each of these two sides. There is less sugar molecules developed in the left hand side here therefore higher water potential uh, there because it's a more dilute solution compared to the right hand side here with more more solutes dissolved and therefore a higher concentration or lower water potential and therefore we know that water will move from left to right in this instance and you can see that uh, that is the result on this right hand side here. So the answer would have been D. Uh, next question, large food molecules are made of smaller basic units. Okay, so here we've got uh, a couple of different things really just testing your knowledge of what makes up what. Uh, the answer would have been glycerol uh, being a basic unit of oils, but you should also know that glycerol isn't the only uh, unit that makes up oils and you should be familiar with this diagram here. One unit of fat is actually made up of one glycerol along with three fatty acid units and that makes up what we know as fat or oil. So therefore, you know, glycerol is indeed a basic unit of oils and everything else doesn't quite make sense. Uh, if we go through it, amino acids are basic units of protein. You should know that. Basic 
uh, uh, fatty acids, the basic units again of oils as well, and not starch. Uh, simple sugar is indeed the basic units of starch or other polysaccharides, and definitely not that of a protein. Uh, so the answer would have been C. Uh, the fourth, fourth question here, the structures of all these things here you should be familiar with and their functions. Antibody of course binds with antigens in the topic of immunity um, and sort of assists with their destruction and removal from the body. We've got DNA of course is important in making proteins and enzymes being important with uh, the binding of enzymes and substrates uh, assisting with a lot of chemical reactions that go on in the body. Uh, the antibodies do not have any sort of bases or active sites involved, they just simply have a binding site in which the antigen binds with the antibody. Um, so here we go, we've got something called the antigen binding site and that is the main sort of site of uh, specificity of, of the antibody with the antigen. Uh, the DNA of course is made up of these little base units um, and the specific sequence of these base units will make the code for a certain mRNA molecule that eventually goes out and gets sort of decoded by the ribosome and uh, that makes the sequence of amino acids and therefore overall the proteins and you should be all you know very familiar with these uh, but that is to be covered in another topic but ultimately DNA uh, the most important thing there is it doesn't have an active site it's you know it doesn't have a binding site at all it's all about that base order that allows it to be specific and enzymes as you know has something called an active site that is the point of sort of a connection between a substrate and an enzyme for the enzyme substrate complex allowing the cattle uh, catalyzation to occur so uh, you should be aware that the answer here is D. Uh, the fifth question, the table shows uh, the results of two tests and uh, pretty similar to I think the first question we looked at this is a simple test of your knowledge of food testing. Uh, Benedict's is, we talked about, a uh, test for reducing sugars, a burette test being a test for proteins, ethanol being for fats, and iodine being for starch. Uh, given that the positive, um, there was a positive outcome for the Benedict's and burettes, it would suggest that the answer here is C, with positive uh, burettes meaning that protein was was present and the benedicts uh, suggesting that the reducing sugar was present and nothing else so here the answer would be C. Pretty simple. And the last question here uh, is testing your knowledge of you know basically a, a little bit of uh, photosynthesis and uh, the plant structure and all that. So here the white areas of the leaf, uh, you should sort of consider the fact that if it's white then it's not going to have chlorophyll and therefore if it doesn't have chlorophyll then photosynthesis isn't going to happen in that, those certain areas and if photosynthesis doesn't happen then you don't, you don't get any starch in those areas. Uh, whereas the green plants do have chlorophyll and you, you'd expect starch to be manufactured in those regions. So therefore if you were to cover the whole a uh, whole leaf with iodine, you'd expect the originally green areas to turn blue-black due to the presence of starch, whereas the other whiter areas will be yellow-brown, mimicking the original color of the iodine solution, i.e. a negative test. Uh, so here the answer would have been A. Okay, so I hope that video helped you guys. Um, if you like the video, please share, subscribe, and like the videos. It really helps the channel. Otherwise, please check out my Patreon. You can get access to all of these questions, if not more. I've got around 500 or more questions in total. Um, so please check that out. I think it will be available for your revision. And it's all organized in topics as well. So after you finish revising a topic, you can go straight to the MCQs and just, you know, have a quiz for yourself and see where you're at in terms of your knowledge but um otherwise i will see you in your next uh in, in the next video